Nihau ma, guten morgen, buenos dias, and all, whatever language, a great big good morning to all my friends and neighbors. And, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't share with you as, as a runner, as a jogger, as a walker, and so forth, this is the most important piece of equipment that you have. Because if it's not right, Oh, the needless pains we bear because things aren't right from the knees down as well as the nose up and so forth. So shoe selection is so, so important. And you have all kind of patients with all kind of different dilemmas and so forth and aches and pains in the legs because they do not select the right shoe. Again, running is only for 60% of the people. This is not the kind of shoe that I would run across the United States in. This is good, it's cute, and it's pretty, and, it, and I feel good. I, I just feel sexy in this kind of a shoe. You know what I'm saying? And I need all the help that I can get. And, but, for instance, when you go to the store, if you go to a running store or a, an athletic store, ask the, ask the person, the clerk, how many miles do you run a week? What is your athletic background? If that person is not running 35 miles a week, then say, can you, can you point me to someone that's got some experience running? First of all, in shoe selection, it's got to have breathability. You've got to have the, the aeration. Because when you're out on the road, many a time, Miss Maria, the heat is more than 130 degrees. Your feet are going to swell up. Uh, I think in one of the slides yesterday, one of the earlier pictures, you see where I aerate my shoes and I cut out the sides because your feet swell up and then ever so often uh, I have to plunge my feet in ice water to keep the swelling, you know, to keep the swelling down. So the shoe has got to have breathability and I had the priceless opportunity of advising the mesh, the mesh type uppers when I ran across the United States in, in 1980. Um, I said, let's get together shoe designers and instead of regular the old non-aerated shoe, what if we put mesh on the top? The next thing you want to you want to look at is what's called the midsole. And the most popular type of midsole that they have, oh there's an SBR rubber, but the most the manufacturers use what's called an EVA type of midsole. It's this part right in through here. And you can they can say we got two for one this week. And you can buy two pair of shoes and you can put one pair of the shoes up on your shelf and forget about it and a year later you go to put it on and it's like putting a tying a board to your feet because the EVA loses its ability, its memory, it compacts just in time. A pair of shoes, and manufacturers know this, they become obsolescent very quick. They have, it's built in so that that you're going to have to buy a new pair of shoes. Typically about 600 miles, 600 miles on a pair of shoes and you've toss it because it loses its, it loses its memory. It has, does not have the ability, the, it's the resonant energy transfer just exactly as the dove, the senar and so forth. It activates the cells. Well, when you run, you've got to have shock absorption and that energy because each time that foot hits the ground you have a g-force that's coming on the lower back and is that force has got to be able to go into that shock shock absorber and absorb that energy that's coming from your body into the into the shoe if it doesn't it's going to be a rebound effect it's going to come back up your legs are going to hurt you're going to end up with shin splints and so forth you, about 600 miles, eh, some people 700 miles, but about 600 miles, toss your shoes. No, don't toss them. They're good to mow the yard in. That's it. That's it. Uh, the next thing is the counter ability. So many manufacturers, they just put cardboard back here. Talk to the people. Make sure you've got a good heel counter. I developed a shoe once, and when I get ready to run across the world, uh, I have a shoe design that will be coming out. No, I'm not trying to sell, sell shoes here today. But I call it my PS3. And that's pronation, supination, three degrees. Because the heel, the normal rotation is about three degrees. You'll pronate, supinate. And, and so you've got to have the heel nice and snug within the, within the, the box here. 
affordability, comfortability, mileageability, uh, absorbability. Those are the things that they go along. It's ridiculous that they're charging hundred dollars for a pair of shoes. I was in the, I was in, uh, in a marketing planning meeting one time, and they said we're going to call, we're going to call. There's only going to be fifteen hundred. You'll appreciate this, the marketing, and the the gimmicks that go on. And they said we're going to call the shoe the nine ninety nine, and there's only going to be fifteen hundred pairs sold. And we're going to just prove to ourselves that America will pay ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents for a pair of shoes. And the reason they came up with $9.99 is because they put in all of their cost of manufacturing, $9.99, and they, they immediately had $1,500, and they said, oh, there's been such a demand, there's such a demand, and thus started the $100 shoe plus. It's ridiculous. So, anyway, you can get, does that answer your questions about shoes? Thank you, Irene.